Morning. Hope you can carry on watching me for the next 55 minutes to try and build a little diorama that I've got here. It's going to showcase the new KX63. I've got some other bits and bobs, got some grasses. So let's see what we can do in 55 minutes. Okay. Right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of our texture sheets. I'm going to use the TX, where am I? Here, 199. The first thing I'm going to do is just glue this on to this off cut 4mm MDF, and this is going to be my main baseboard. So for speed, I'm using some Pritt stick. I've got some super glues with me. I'm going to try and cut as many corners as I can and see what I can get done in 55 minutes. I'd probably use Pritt stick anyway, in all fairness, because a PVA or that sort of thing might sort of make your paper wrinkle up. And I can work on this immediately as soon as I've got it down. So I've kind of cheated a little bit. I have already cut my texture sheet down here. I'm not worried about this white line because the grass is going to cover that. Right. Happy days, there we go, there's the baseboard on. So, the plan is we're going to have, I'm doing this my way, facing me, but essentially it's going to be this way. So we're going to have the barn at the back. I'm making this up as I go along a little bit, but I think we're going to have an Alex 006 fencing somewhere along here. Some wild grass out of the property, then some cleaner grass in the property. Got some sleepers and other bits and bobs here to make up. So I'm just, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some planters. And I'm using our railway sleepers for this, which is the Alex 80. I've already cut some down in half. Try and give me a bit of a head start. So I've already glued these two together. And these are great for little planters. We do make planters as a, as a cardboard kit. But if you want to scratch build your own, these are a great way of doing them. And what I was saying in the comments on, on the group about gluing your fingers together, I can't edit that out today. So the trick with super glue is just keep your fingers moving and you shouldn't get in any bother. I'm just going to stack these sleepers together. This will be the front and the back. And then we're going to quickly weather it. Add some matte lacquer over the top of it. I've got some Woodland Scenics flowers. I've got some yellows, purples, reds. So I'll probably go with an orange and a red for the planters. And I'm going to try and have a go at doing some gauze bushes as well. That's what the yellow's for. I've got my assistant next to me, Justin. I'm doing, not doing anything apart from typing. It's quite nice not doing it, actually, this morning. Right, so now I'm going to glue these together. You can use the rocket glue or the super fatic glue for this if you've got a bit of time. You just want to crack on with it. And obviously super glue is the way to do it. I may have to build this in situ. Ideally, I don't want to, so I can weather and paint it and get it together before I put it on the baseboard. So there we go, that's starting to bite quite quickly. Not sure about the scale on this, it's uh, it's quite a beast. But as far as planters go, well, in fairness, they can be any size they any size you want really, can't they, Justin? Mm. Well, a lot of um, raised beds and stuff are made out of sleepers. So it's probably about right, actually. Yeah, I think so. Right, so I'm going to fill this with some green sort of scatters give it some body. I've got some Woodland Scenics F61, I think it's called. And I'm going to put that in there first and then finish it off with the flowers. So it's definitely going to be a bit rustic, this. Hopefully, I can get it together quite quickly. Right, now, that, while that's going off, I'm going to put some other things together. As you can see, I've managed to glue my thumb to it there. There we go. Right, I'm going to let that dry a minute before I start painting it. So I'm probably going to put the LX001 together 
probably one of my favourite kits. Just such a simple, straightforward kit. Not a lot of skill to do put this together, and it gives you wicked results. I do like scratch building these, but I have to say, after knowing how easy these are to put together now, I quite often just go to these instead. Somebody's just asked what we would use for soil. What would you use for soil then? You can use real soil. There's nothing better than the real thing. I've actually done that recently uh, on my own layout. So I've just soil out the garden. I've then just dried it out. I just, once dinner had finished, I'd just put it in a pot in the oven, let it dry out for a couple of hours, sieved some of it and then not sieved another half of it. So you get two different sort of textures of soil and it works really well if you dilute it with um you dilute pva glue with water just soak it in and treat it like a ballast it works it works really well you can add grouts and fillers to it to sort of lighten it if you if you need to uh, it can dry quite dark soil once it's wet so if you do add white fillers to it it just lightens it up and gives you a gives you a better effect so it gives a drier appearance doesn't it yeah that's right Somebody just said use dried tea leaves, which I suppose would work. Would they be a bit coarse, though? No, I have heard of that. Yeah, they, that could work quite well. You could use that under sort of trees mm -hmm. and under hedgerows as well, um, you know, just to give yourself a little bit more mm -hmm. texture than what a fine soil would be. Right, so here we go. Just once these at the hardest bit and building Alex 001, I think Justin would agree with me. <laughs> Is cutting it out. Yeah, cutting Once it's out, cut yeah. out, you're laughing. Mm -hmm. So by the time I've glued this together, my planter should be ready to weather. And then we'll get some static grass on there. We'll get the barn where we want it. We'll figure out where we want it. Start doing the boundaries. We've got some um, little foil sheets of it that have gone for our roller, have they? The little foil, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Through, yeah. We may do them as a product at some point, but I need to make sure that we can make them consistently. <laughs> They're a bit random at the minute, but they work. No, they look great. We're going to weather them today as well. Just, uh, I'm interested to see how you do that and the static grass because I've never, believe it or not, I've never actually done static grass ever. Oh, it's, um, I'm assuming that's mine. Is yeah, that that's mine. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. Glue pot. Yeah, it's just, yeah, we'll wash it out then. Um, yeah, no, I've never really done static grass. Static grass is messy, as a lot of you probably know, but the end results are well worth it. I tend to use a paintbrush with the rocket card glue and then just dip it in a pot. I just find this is the, the easiest way for me. I don't have to worry about anything being clogged up. Yeah, I suppose that's not a bad way of working, actually, because the glue tips are a bit of a nuisance. They're good for fine application of stuff, but then if you've got a fine paintbrush, then... Then you can use a fine, thing. yeah, or cocktail sticks. Yeah. I know I don't have to worry about anything being blocked this way, and it's mm. it's never going to let me down, especially yeah. live. It's not no. going to just suddenly block yeah, and, and not work. Very true. Right, so here's one of the gates. Nearly done. I do intend on having two gates, whether or not I get time to do both the gates today. You never know, we might have to do a part two on this project. I would like to have probably had about, I don't know, a couple of couple of evenings on this, so perhaps three hours. So we'll see what we can do in 55 minutes. We're not putting the pressure on. No, on no purpose. No pressure. <laughs> we've just got a, we just got, I've got a meeting at 11 o'clock, so which we've got to do up here, so I've got to, uh, got to be done just before that's all that's the only reason why there's a time limit on this morning right so there's the gate done right so i'm going to go back to the planter now so hopefully that shouldn't fall apart on me as you can see it's a little bit rustic but you know it's been put together by the owners of the property so what i'm going to do is use some weathering powders on this and then i'm going to seal them in with a matte lacquer i happen to just have some world scenics powders here but any powders will do to be fair so I've got a black and I've got a brown, as you can see. And again, I'm just going to use a paintbrush for this. And the plywood's really good with powders because it just seems to bite on it really well. And before you lacquer it, it doesn't really look like you're doing much. As soon as you put the lacquer on it, it pops and works a treat. But I tend to just do it over the pot. 
and then anything that's not sticking just falls off. So I usually put a concrete dust or any brown, give it a good coat of brown, and then concentrate with the black to add sort of damp effects to it. So we'll put black sort of down the bottom or even up the top as well where, you know, the, plant, the, the plants have been watered. And if you put a bit too much on it, you can just keep brushing it and it sort of tends to disappear. You can always put the black on the top. You can mix, mix the colours together. So I'm going to matte lacquer this now and just get it all over my hands. Usually, obviously, I'd matte lacquer this, leave it to dry. I'm just going to do this over the side so I don't get it over the lens. So if I just show you how it looks now, there we go. It's really hard getting it. It is, it is. It's like, trying to, it's like trying to, what's it, trim your hair, trim your fringe or something in a mirror or whatever. Or It's really... Where are we? There, we? there we go. So just a coat of matte lacquer. It's just sealed it in. And obviously when that's dry, you'll lose that gloss look. And it gives you quite a good like timber effect. Yeah, like that. As you can see, easy, minutes, seconds, if not. Right, so I'm going to get some grass down now, get the messy bit out the way. I'm going to use a few different colours here. I've got an autumn two mil, which is quite a dark green. I intend on using that for outside the property. I'm going to tone it down with some winter as well. And then I've got a summer, which is a much greener, looking which i think would be better for in the property so i think we're going to have it somewhere like there this back piece will be covered in grass so i'm going to start with the autumn on this part here so i'm going to use some basing glue you can use pva but a basing glue really is, is better for this sort of stuff it does go off quick so you can't mess around with it I'm going to use a paintbrush again for this. So the Alex 006, I intend on putting somewhere here. So that'll be the boundary almost between the two glues. I'm going to use some layering spray and try and blend the grasses a little bit as well. And then use, like I was saying, use the Alex 006 boundary. It's quite warm up here today, and that is already going tacky. So you, you've got to be quick with this basing glue. Really got to be quick with it. In fact, you probably want to load your hopper before you put your glue down. I'm using a micro applicator here. From WWS, obviously, there's plenty of us at the same sort of price. They all do the same thing. They make the grass stand up. This is quite a good size for this sort of diorama. You can obviously get the bigger applicators as well if you're doing a, a bigger area. But to be fair, the mo anything the size of a micro will work well on your layout. You'll be surprised how, how far you can go with them. I think we did have some Gage Master ones for a bit, didn't we? we did, yeah. And they're about the same sort of size, aren't they? Same size, yeah. And the, the knock to a professional one, which is quite a nice machine as well. But if that's a micro, what's the full size one like? That's huge. So the, gr the, gr <laughs> that's the, 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 grand, the grand is the grand is massive yeah, as designed for sort of like longer grasses. I'm just yeah. using, a, I'm just using two mils today. I find two mils are probably the best, really, and you can just build up the layers. So we're loaded up. You haven't got to keep your clip in the glue. It's just a negative to the positive, which is obviously on the hopper. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's close to it and the glue hasn't dried, which this has, you should get grass standing up. Unfortunately, my glue's dried, so I'm going to just wet that up with layering spray. This is what enables you to put your different coats on. Look like a hairspray type stuff it's yeah pretty much a little bit longer la lasting than a hairspray yeah. but essentially it's a spray glue this is when it gets messy right there we go now it's starting to stand oh, up yeah because the glue the basing glue just dried too quick essentially 
Oh, well. See, I always thought you had to put a nail in the board. Yeah, well, they always, in tutorials, they always show you putting a nail it, in the board, yeah. and putting a clip on the nail, and faffing around with that. But it is. It's a, it's a myth with that. As long as the hop, as long as the clip is near the hopper, yeah, then you're okay. Mm. Oh, well. Remember that one. So I'm just going to put a different colour on there now, just to give it some interest. This is where, if I was doing my own videos, I would, um, I would now pause. And do the editing while I was filling up the hopper with different colours and tidying things up as I go along. But obviously, I don't have that option today. I suppose eventually you need a couple of different applicators, then you can have them prepared with different grasses. I suppose you could, it's yeah. A real slickness, but we're not that not that slick. So I've got some winter now. This should just dark it up a little bit. Now we need to just try and get some more along this edge. And you can see it's a little bit yellower. Giving me the look I want for a field. You don't need to seal it in with the um, layering spray, but I tend to do it just, just for a peace of mind, really. Got some scatters, and I'm going to add some scatters along this grass as well. If you haven't got that layering spray, would hairspray work, or is it not quite as good? Matte lacquer would be better. Okay, right. <laughs> just blowing away the uh, grass so a matte lacquer would be better right. than hairspray hairspray is probably going to do the job but it's only going to last a couple of days right uh you know if you put hairspray in, in your hair it's not there forever is it it no, sort of wears sure. off so a matte lacquer would would work fine i've actually got a matte lacquer here as well this is just what this is just one off ebay yeah. uh, any motor trait matte lacquer will do to be fair you could use a gloss lacquer on on any timber because it soaks it up so much you're not really going to see the gloss in it. So I've got some like Jarvis scatter now, and I'm just adding a little bit of scatter over the static glass, and it just sits on top, and it just gives you another dimension. I've also got some burnt grass from Woodland Scenics, T44. That This is my favourite. I tend to not do anything without this. And again, this it's almost like a moss. So I'm going to put this along this edge, because this is where I intend on having the fence comes together really quickly i've never done this no it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> if you've got the right gear it really doesn't take much hello lola <laughs> we always knew lola was going to say hello right so next up i think i'm going to do my alex 006 and i'm going to get that on my edge and then i'm going to continue with the summer grass which essentially will be in the property now a wizard already made this Never mind, here we go. Somebody's just asked, could you tape the earthing clip to the side of the hopper then if it doesn't need to be clipped to the board? You, yeah. Could you tape it and just do it that way? Yeah, you, yeah, you can. I've um, I've got the, the detailer, which is the small one at home, and I tend to just hold that in one hand with the clip just hanging down by the hopper, and then obviously you've got the other hand free then. Yeah, you could do that. You could, you could just tape it on. Um, I think Dan, actually, from... Tunnel Lane, Dan oh, Everson. Tunnel, yeah. I think I think he created like a little wire, right? That just that he just sort of like hooked it in, um, and that worked. That worked quite well. Todd, you should have got your proper pack of that rather than the second using the second. Yeah, I'm trying to use seconds here, and uh, I'm, it's going to take some cutting. I think lesson learned. I will make my fencing before I go live. Because this isn't really very interesting for you guys to watch either. I can appreciate that. All right, so I'm just going to move the camera a bit. So I've just tweaked it. Yeah, no worries. See a bit. Got any any other questions or anything? Just while I'm um, cutting. Mainly about the static grass and the question about the layering glue. Really, um, somebody else says, "Can you <laughs> can you use a woolly jumper and a party balloon?" Instead of a static grass applicator, I don't know. The concept, probably, but yeah, it'd be interesting to try something like that. I suppose you sort of could, but then you've got the problem. If you put the static on and try and get it to stand up, the balloon would encourage the grass to stand up, but if it's already stuck to the glue, it's not going to, is it? No, I mean, they're not they're not cheap, but it's it's one of the... Once you've got it, you, you've got it. And I say they're not cheap, but, you know, it's sort of 60, 70... I mean, what do they range from? 60 to 100 quid? Yeah. You know, they're yeah. all about the same, aren't they? I mean, you know, we, we pay a couple of hundred quid, don't we, for a loco with sound. Mm. Um, so if you look at it sort of like that, it's um, it's, it's, money, it's money well spent, really. 
I may need another one of these, Justin. It doesn't seem to be cutting out. I'll go, I'll go see if I can get one. Is that all right? I'll see if we've got one, yeah. I'll go see if we've got one. So again, this is another one of my favourite kits. Just simple, straightforward. As you can see, the reason this is a second is because it was cut out of focus. And the reason that this hasn't been sold is because it doesn't cut out very easily. And they tend to rip if you try and pull them out and they're not cut properly. We've got another one, have we? Right, this one should be much easier. There we go. This is this is what you guys get in the post. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner focus. And this one should cut out, no problem. I tend to never drill any holes for this fencing. I tend to just cut the bottoms off and just glue it in place. I just find it a little bit easier. When I have tried to drill the holes, I end up putting the holes in the wrong place. Yeah. And then it never works out and I end up then just cutting cutting them off anyway you get quite a decent area on the bottom of the um, post yeah and, and with it being caught it just sucks up the glue anyway so it'll glue to it. uh, while making the fencing is there any movement on engaged station fencing i'll get onto it tom i'll get it sorted we pulled the original cardboard version of the station fencing and switched it to laser board for double o and i've done the same with the engage one, I just need to finish off a couple of bits, but I'll put it on my list. Um, we've just been really busy this last couple of weeks with Easter and stuff. Easter was crazy, wasn't it? And a really, really busy week, wasn't it? So we've just been a little bit, little bit um, up to our ears with stuff. What's the best selling item now? Oh, uh, good question. I don't know. Uh, off the top of my head. 35s? 55s? Cable, that's cable trunk and security yeah. fence and for you guys. We get so used to just talking in numbers now. I'll have a quick look to see what the best selling item is this month. I don't know yet. Best selling product in the last 30 days is actually this. This here barn thing um, that Sam's going to be working with today. That's the best selling one, Tech 063. Other than that, no roof tiles. Yeah. Oh, the new, the, yeah, the new ones, the 410s. Yeah, they're, they're brilliant. They are. They're really good. Best seller. And over the last, what should we do? Last 12 months. See what's the best seller is for the last 12 months. Probably the barn. Okay, it's 57. No, 35, LX35. 35, 35 trunk, yeah. Trunking and then LX06, which is fencing that Sam's just doing now, and LX56. Then after that, it's deluxe rocket car glue. Oh, it's wow. the fourth best seller. Um, LX006, that must be that must be up there. Yeah, yeah, LX06 is second best. Yeah. Then 56. Then brass chain, ultra fine chain, then hard standing clips. Still must get the engaged version done. It's around in a cupboard here, somewhere the original one, and I just need to tweak the spacing on it a bit on for the uh, bits that go between the rails. More more jobs. I think what I'm going to do here is just put these planks on one side, just for speed. Mm. Obviously, usually you would put them on both sides to give you that more of a 3D effect. Alan Downs always used to say, though, um, if you're only looking at the model from one side, why model both? Yeah, I like that. I'm, I, I'm, very, I'm very much for that. All the back, all the backs of his buildings never had anything on them. Just no. plain card. Yeah, I'm, ve I'm very much for that. Only model what you can see. I know a lot of people really like to add all that detail in places that you don't see. You know, it's, mm. it's each to their own, isn't it? It's fantastic mm. when you look in a signal box and you. You see all that detail in there, like, you know, the, the newspapers and the clocks on the side and stuff. I think it's just the fact that they know it's there then. Um, and it's really impressive. And it's a bit rewarding as well, isn't it? Because you, know you know it's as good inside yes, as right. it is outside. It's, yeah. it's complete. Yeah. 
I must admit, when I did the barn, I thought, shall I put build the, the building, the outbuilding that you're doing, using today? I thought, shall I put an interior in it or not? Who's going to see it? It's only got two windows. You think, but for completeness, it's there. Then you can model, with things like that, you can model it in any... Well, uh, you could put our 3D level. chairs, yeah. 3D well, yeah. printed chairs in yeah. there, couldn't we? And yeah. Or the office, office sort of stuff, maybe. Yeah, true. I can't type. Even this rocket car grew is drying really quick today. Yeah, it is warm up here. Twist the sun up here. <laughs> Top of this like a greenhouse in here. It is like a greenhouse in here. Right, so I'm just going to cut these bottom bits off then rather than worry about having to do any drilling. It'd be interesting, guys, actually. Do, you, do most of you drill holes? And then put these posts in, or do you do you do it the way I do it and just cut them off I and sort of rely on the glue? Looking at the t at the comments, a lot of people just cut them off and glue them in. Yeah, and I think that's probably the quickest and easiest way of working with it. To be honest. Right, I'm not going to do any more fencing for a minute. I'll come back to it if I need to because I feel like I've spent enough time on fencing. I know that I'm going to need more. On the diorama let's get that back in front of the camera get a bit more grass on get the planters on we've got another kit here that's not released yet i don't think is it but no, be LX it's something something we want to show you guys yeah. so we're going here i'm going to have the fence here obviously i need to make more fence so what i'm going to do now is start putting some summer I got a pen, Any a pencil, pen, anything. Yep. I'm just going to draw now where I want to put the glue. Thank you. So I'm going to have, I've got an idea to go around the edge of the building. So I'm going to use this just as a glue line. We leave concrete faces around the front. This would be roughly the path. That's a drive here. We probably want grass in here. Right, there we go. I can see where I need to put my glue now. And again, this is going to dry really quick. So I might actually use, I'm going to put this down and then use. I'm going to spray layering spray over the top of it as well. The layering spray just seems to hold a little bit wetter for a bit longer. So I need to make sure I do is just put glue just the other side of the pen line. And then you won't see the biro. As you can see, I'm just going a couple of mil past it. Somebody says, could you use an awl instead of a, instead of drilling to speed things up? Yeah, depending on what your baseball's made of, I suppose. Um, years ago, when I built a layout in my teens, I think I did it on some dealer board, or whatever it's called. The, my dad managed to get some from work because they took some old notice boards out. It's that soft notice board kind of material. And that was really good because you just poke into it with a nail or a battle or a, anything sharp screwdriver and make holes in seconds. So, but it, obviously, if you've got a plywood baseboard, or MDF or anything else that's harder, chipboard, you're going to be, it's going to be hard work, isn't it? Hopefully this is going to stay wetter a bit longer. Any any grass that I get where I don't want it, if it was painted, I could scrape it off. But it being a wrap, I'm going to have to be a bit more careful. I've just turned the heating down a bit. <laughs> it makes a difference. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to use some 2 mil summer now, which is going to be a little bit greener. And it's, I'm hoping this gives you the idea of you know a property where where this is the lawn this has been looked after obviously the field doesn't get cut doesn't get looked after as much Toad in the hopper that's why i'm off camera hopefully that's enough there you don't have to load it again and you can see this is a lot a lot greener on what i wanted to do try and get that contrast
And obviously, if I had more time, we could do a lot more layering, spend a lot more time on this. But essentially, we are doing what we can do in 55 minutes. Looks pretty good. We have about 25 minutes left, and it's looking pretty decent. Right, so there's a light coat on there. I'm going to finish off with scatters now, again, just for speed. So I'm going to use a layering spray, or again, you could just use a matte varnish. And you're just wetting up your grass, because obviously you can't wet it up using a paintbrush. So really, that would have another layer now, but we're going to cheat, and we're going to just use some scatter. It's not going to be quite the pretty lawn I intended. I'm going to use the burnt grass as well. So I'm using the same scatter and the same burnt grass as I was with the autumn, but just with this different color base layer, just gives you a totally different finish. I just, just said, can I answer his previous question? I missed your previous question, to be honest. I'm not ignoring it. Um, the co comments move really quick. I don't know how Tina manages to catch up. So I'll keep up with them sometimes. Um, the comments move really quick, so I'm just scrolling through to try and find your comment, um, Roger. Uh, oh, Roger says, when are you going to call Justin Be Duck? Yeah, I'm used to people calling him. Oh, I'm used to that. Call, actually. Yeah. All right, Be Duck. Yeah. It's uh, definitely a, a Colville, Derby, Midlands kind of thing. That's stoking. Yeah. All right, Be Duck. There's a bit more our kid from where, I, where I'm from. Mm. Right, I am going to give that another little sprinkle because I'm not entirely happy with that. So I'm going to do more summer again. And that will just cover some of the patchiness sort of put in. So if you go too much with one colour, you can always, you know, add something else on there just to tone it back down. And then we can start worrying about the kits, which is really what this video is about. That looks good with the different blends, though. It adds, couldn't, I mean, no, nothing in real life is all uniform. It's no. like I've said you're the, you're the, well, over several weeks, not every building is the same brick. Not every, every building is the same stone and things like that. Asphalt's different colours, different shades. You've got, this is it. You know, grass is the same. Nature isn't uniform. I'm Only just, nature that's been interfered with by man is uniform, perhaps. This, this is it. This is why I'm going to try and leave these sections. Mm a little bit more uniform, like they're, like they're a turf. I'm just using the F61 here, just to break it up a little bit more. It's a bit bright, that green. I'm not that keen on the summer one. I prefer the two mil muddy myself. As you can see, a lot of it's flying out, but I am rushing here. Right, I'm gonna leave that for the scenics and get some kits on it. So, what was this called again, Justin? What's the part number for this? Uh, LX419 dash hello. So here's our scaffolding that you might have seen online. Justin was crazy enough to make it. Um, but it's that, I mean, look at it. It's so, it's such a cool kit. If you're into sort of like precision modeling and you get your fix from this sort of stuff, it just looks phenomenal. Really impressed with it. I'm not sure if he knows this yet, but I'm about to hack it up live um, because it's too high for the barn. But the idea is because this barn has got some roof tiles missing, the idea is we're going to put the scaffolding up as if it's having new tiles put on. So we've got weathered tiles on the back and clean tiles on the front. Now you can buy the you can buy clean tiles, yeah. can't you? But yeah. essentially what you've done here, you've just turned these round, haven't you? Yeah, just turned them over. So it's a 410 and we've just turned them round. So you've got some clean ones and some weathered ones. So I'm going to try and do this backwards now for the benefit of you guys. Somebody just asked the question about asphalt and, and using wet and dry for roads. Have yeah, I've, I've, I've heard people doing that for um, for flat roofs, sheds and, oh, right. yeah, and felt. as a felt. Yeah. I think it would probably work quite well as a road as well. And you could weather that really, really well. Weathering powders would really grip into the grip. Yeah. Um, so I think that'd be quite, I think that'd be quite good to use probably 1500, 2000. Yeah, I probably really wouldn't go fine, any wouldn't less it? than that. Um, it, it would just look too gritty. You'd have to be very confident with your weathering as well. Cause as I'd mentioned, as soon as you put the powder on it, that's it. It would just stay where it landed. Yeah. You're not going to get it off once no, it's on. No. 
Right, so I think that's going to live something like that. This is interesting doing it back to front because I usually have the camera sat almost on oh, my yeah, chest. Yeah. So, you, and then you work around it. So, I'm thinking the scaffolding here, I'm just going to cut all the legs off the bottom and have the planks flat on the floor. Um, but that should give me about the right height. So, um, sorry, Justin. Okay, I know you spent how long it, on this, but now, it, I'm, uh, now I'm cutting it to pieces. That's fine. It's a great kit. I'll, um, I'll look forward to seeing this one out. And see on point, is it on the point four, the scaffold? What's point, the scaff eight. Point, eight. Point, point eight and point four later board for the planks. Yeah. And the planks, are very, we do the planks separately, yeah. don't we? So you can already buy your planks. So again, if you wanted to buy this kit and you wanted to add more planks. Yeah. And would you, you get the ladder with it as well then, would you? Yeah, you'll yeah. get exactly what you see there. You probably that'll be one kit that will build that. And there should, when I finished it, which I'm hoping to finish it, perhaps this afternoon or tomorrow, you'll get a jig with it as well, which makes it easier than it was when I built it. You're not, you, you don't really fancy easy. doing this, like building this live then? If but. my jig works, no idea for the jig works, then yes, I'll do it. Okay. If it doesn't work, then no, I'm not a chance. I'm keen to see the, how, the, how you'll design the jig for this because um, I can just see how it'll help people out a lot. Yeah. It should be, it should hold all the parts or I'll hold at least two to three of the parts in position. And when while they dry, the rest of it sort of then just kind of falls together. It should be or falls apart, depending on how good you are. But no, it should be all right if it works. Or how good I am at designing the well, just a bit of silver paint, it just brings it to life, mm. doesn't it? Yeah, a lot of this laser board yeah. stuff, just a coat of paint. Same with the shop fronts, isn't it? Yeah. Just a coat of paint and they just they just come to life, don't yeah. they? And they're really it's really nice to paint because it's so you can't get runs with it, can you? Because if you're spraying it, because it's uh it just soaks it up, doesn't it? Because it's porous. Mm, that's right. If it was plastic, you may start getting runs with it, mightn't you? I much prefer working with sort of anything that's porous. It seems to work well with, again, with the weathering powders or anything that you're trying to weather. If the surface is porous, it just seems to bite and accept it. Yes. Plastic's quite tricky. Um, I do like weathering plastic, but I find you have to probably use more paints rather than weathering powders or put your weathering powders on top of your paints rather than weathering powders on top of like a bare substrate of plastic right that's chopped down now and i chopped the wrong side no that's, no, that's right that's all right so we've got the ladder on the inside so you would walk in there i think i fluked that but that's spot on the right height really to right, get on the roof yeah. isn't it Strictly speaking, you wouldn't have the planks in the bottom. On like the bottom, you'd leave them off, wouldn't you? You wouldn't have planks, but because that's a pre-built thing that I'd done. That looks all right, actually. Yeah, that's, that's, really that's not bad, is it? Yeah. Right, so I'm going to get the planter in place now, and I think I might do this in situ, so I may have to turn it to that angle, which is all right for you guys like that, isn't it? So as you can see now, we've got sort of the boundary, we've got the path. This is some sort of drive i did i probably would have thought about it a little bit more if i had the time the planters going there and as you can see it's an absolute beast but it's just giving you an example of what you can do with the sleepers they can be debris on the side of rails or if you're doing a rail repair sort of diorama uh, but again you know you can use them for planters uh, what else do sleepers use for I mean, people use them for retaining walls retaining walls in yeah. fact we did we use some of the retaining walls for the mm. anderson shower diorama didn't yeah. we yeah yeah um, so these these, yeah. these have got a lot of a lot of scope to use with them. So you could, if you wanted to make these not in situ on the board, then you would obviously put a bottom on them, and then you can fill them with your plants and your flowers, and then stick them sort of on your layout, which is the way I I tend to do it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to glue that in place in situ. I'm going to have that sat there. The scaffolding is going to have to move over a little bit because I don't think the owners would be too happy because they can't get through the door. Somebody's and there isn't, a, there isn't a back door either no, on this kit, is one, there? No. Somebody's, no, somebody's just... Obviously, you could you could adjust the scaffolding when you build the kit. You can tweak it. Um, if I'd have put the if I put the new tiles on the back or the part-covered roof on the back and put the full roof on the front, then obviously the scaffolding would go up back of the building on this diorama. But it is what it is. It's, it's that way around. Um, that's fine. That's all right. Right, so I've got this. I think it's F51... Woodland Scenics. I think Tim Cooper was watching earlier. I, I, he'll, he'll know what it is. 
he, he, he's the man for for the part numbers on this stuff. I've got no idea on this. No, I think it's F fifty one light foliage. I think it's called. They do a few different colours of it, but it's great for just filling planters and stuff like that. If you wanted to sort of like save materials, you could even fill the bottom up with you know I don't know paper or anything really. I've used a substantial amount there. I'm just going to sweep away bits on the drive. It's coming together really quickly because we've got 15 minutes left. 15, 15, minutes, 15 minutes left. left. So that's not bad. It's no, not bad. it's not bad. But if we have to, if it has to be a two-parter, we can do the second bit next week. Fine. That's it. But this is really starting to come together. Right, now this is probably going to blow out a little bit here. I'll try and get some decent pictures of this later and put them in the Facebook group and on anywhere else, Instagram and stuff, so you can see the... The detail in the grass, you can't really tell on the, on the video, perhaps, as well as you can in real life. The, the, right, the grass and the foliage looks really smart. So I'm going to use, uh, I've got a flower. This is a Woodland Scenic flower kit as well. I think it's his Fs. Uh, they're all Fs something. Oh, it's a T48, actually. It's a T48 flowering kit. And you just get a range of different colours with it. I'm going to fill this one with orange and red flowers and again if you're doing this on the board or on on your workbench it doesn't matter if you sort of spill the flowers over the side i've got to be ultra careful here and just make sure i get them in the planters so there's the orange on there if you use normal super glue i've only got gorilla glue, super glue gel today which is great because it's got body but this sort of stuff if you get like the, your normal conventional super glue that's like quite watery you can just sort of like soak it over the top. Roger Vance just said, asked about the grass applicator. And see, you just held the held the thing, held the clip instead of pinning it, clipping it to a pin. That, that was today's top tip, really. There was uh, I, I didn't realise I was thinking I'd put a screw in or a nail or something and pin it. But no, Sam just said, hold the thing close to the whatever you called it. The hopper, yes. Yeah, so, so the the if I'm making sure I get this right the way around. So the hopper creates a positive charge and the clip is a negative charge. So anything that comes out of that hopper wants to go to the clip. So providing that clip is where you're putting your grass down, you're not going to have any problems. You, you can get away with almost doing upright bits with static grass applicators, by if you can actually put the clip horizontal. So if you've got your, say, the clip here and the applicator, if you hold it at this sort of angle, it will shoot to the side the only reason it shoots down it's got gravity but it's also attracted to it if you had a big enough charge in theory you could hold the clip higher than the applicator and it would beat gravity and go up if you had the big enough charge but then you'd be probably zapping yourself as well right so there's a planter in I'll try and put this up to the camera i do apologize i'm not used to moving this so you can see it but i think you can just about see the planter there so it could do with being a bit more refined, but again, it's with not. the time we've had, that's not bad. So I've got some ballast somewhere, he says. I saw that. It was a little bag of rice. And I was going to use that as sort of drainage around the building. I'm not sure where I've hid that at the minute. Here right. we go. I've got it. So this is from rival crafts i yeah. i'm i'm not aware of this company but they've sent us some samples out yeah, yeah. They're, and, they're, I, and i had a route through and i thought oh you know what that'll look really good just to go around the edges of the property and you you see it don't you on some mm -hmm. properties they just have yeah. the grass in there so i'm going to use some basing glue for this yeah rival crafts they're based not far from here they're in um helston oh that's the it's, local company yeah, local, oh okay yeah, yeah. Um, rivalcrafts.co.uk i think it is they do primarily um, wargaming stuff, but they've just released a new range of ballast, and some of the stuff is really, really nice. It rivals the um, legacy ballast from DCC Concepts and stuff like that. It's and really, some really, really nice, really nice colours yeah. in there. They do a, a really light sort of limestone one, yeah, uh, which is obviously right up my street, yeah, doing the Peak District. But this grey just seems sort of it's just it's, they've called it slate which is, you know, that's the sort of thing people use in their gardens, don't they? Yeah. So, again, this is going to be a little bit messy. I'm going to pour this in a lid and just try and pinch a bit on. Again, this is the sort of thing that I'd definitely be sort of editing out once I've made all the mess. But I'm going to just try and sweep it in, get it as close as I can, and then I'm going to sweep it in then with a brush. 
I'm sure you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just turning this round. I'm just adding ballast along this edge. It's adding detail and it's also just helping the model look grounded into the into the board. Um, I tend to always cheat using scenics to to, to ground them in. For, for me, there's nothing worse than seeing a great model with a big gap at the bottom. Mm. And for me, I just find this is this is the way to do it. Um, if I did get time, which I haven't made it, so I'm not going to. I was also going to put one of our doormats in. Do you know what the oh, right. you know what the part number is for that? I actually, made them yesterday, LX first time for ages. One one five. Yeah, I think so. So again, so obviously, if you're putting scenery around your building, you you think well, you, you can't put scenics in front of the door. Mm. The doormat will just work work perfect just mm. to cover that gap. Yeah. Right. So I'll show you this again now, if I can. Yeah, so you can good. see I've just used the ballast and I've just used that just to ground the building. I mean, the building's ground quite well when you've got a flat model and you've got a flat baseboard. They tend to sit quite well anyway, but naturally on, on your baseboard where you've got, you know, bits of timber here and there that you've tried putting it together, they, you know, you tend to not quite have a level surface. And this, you know, this is just one sort of trick that I found. Ten minutes left. Works really well. Ten minutes left, yeah. so I need it's to try and together. get right. try and get the fencing on. I think I've learned here. I should, you did say, do you want to make the Alex 006 before? <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I'll I'll just make it on on the on the day. It'll be fine. Um, now I probably should have done it, but let's get the fencing oh, on the back. We can always come back to it next week. It's not not a problem. It's not. It's not. It doesn't it's, have to be done it, today. It's um. It's, it's coming out all right. What what I visioned in my mind. It's. It's coming out all right. So I'm going to put the fence in here. I'm going to forget about this, this gap here for now. And then I'm going to try and do some little gauze bushes. Um, and I've got these, these little foil things that we haven't put into a kit yet, have we? No. Uh, um, but essentially, it's, uh, is it, uh, it's an aluminium that we roll and cut, don't we? Yeah, down? we've got a roller in-house, which is what we use for making the corrugated iron for the what's it called 360, uh, yeah, Anderson, 360 shelter. The Anderson shelter yeah for that um the problem with it is the larger the sheet you try and roll the sort of it sort of skews um because things stretch and don't go through perfectly it would better if it, it would be better if it was a stamp rather than a roller um but we can do small sheets of corrugated iron essentially um but they have to be done kind of to uh Right, so sorry. sorry. It's all right, no, carry on. Alex 006 is on. Again, there should be another Alex 006 here. And perhaps I don't know, a gate. Maybe I might maybe even use a smaller gate here. Uh, perhaps the gate would actually the big gate would actually be here. Two Alex 006s is on this edge. The drive's a little bit out of scale, probably needs to be a little bit bigger. Alex 006 along here. And then maybe our garden fence, mm -hmm. perhaps here before the, the little bit round round the front door. I'm going to put so I'm just going to show you how to do some little gauze bushes with sea foam. Um, I know it's a it's a it's a favorite with modelers and again just to disguise the bottom of your Alex 006 or just to get your Alex 006 a little bit more bedded or just just to give it some interest and break up the uniform of one fence. Uh, you know you can weather it which I've shown you in the last diorama was it um it's got the embankment with a little packet on it. Yeah. And we used right. weathering powders and layering spray on that. So it was the same method. Mm. Um, but just to just to break it up and give you a bit more interest. So I've got a little bit of seafoam. And I'm going to just put some matte lacquer or layering spray on it just to wet it up. And you want to try and not put too much on so it doesn't clump. If it does clump, sort of push it around a little bit. And then any sort of scatter, I tend to use a T49 for this. I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of green over the top. You can start with a brown if you want, but because the sea foam is already brown, it's not too bad. Blow off the excess. Another coat, a layering spray. And then with the yellow flowers, hopefully we can replicate gorse at this time of year, which I don't know if you've noticed at the minute, it's really, really yellow. Mm -hmm. So depending on what sort of time of year you're modelling, and all I'm going to do with this is just simply just sprinkle it over the top. And again, if you put too much yellow on, you think, oh, I've overdone that. You've only got to go over the top again with the green. So it's no issue. That looks really smart. And then I'm just going to seal 
Where are we? I'm just going to seal that back in now with some layering spray. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting because on the lens, it looks it look doesn't look as yellow to you guys, mm. but to me, it looks very yellow. Yeah, it's nice that. Um, Somebody's just said about uh, what's it? Jobs just said about a palette with roof tiles. Now that was the plan, so I think maybe we should come back to this next week and we'll yep. finish off with the other details that we we're going to do. Yeah, definitely. Like yesterday with the roof tiles and various other bits. Yeah, because we'll I'm not going to get round to that today. I mean, we've got five minutes left, and it's really, really taking shape, which is which is brilliant. Um, uh, I missed the one. Um, 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 what's the comment? Somebody said. Uh, so as you can uh, see, I've yeah, Rob, Robert says when you put it to the camera, don't put it too close because Tim will start weathering it. <laughs> very good <I> like that <laughs> right so quickly what i'm gonna how long have we got left uh, five minutes five minutes what i'm gonna do is try and weather some of this foil i had to go yesterday i'm gonna try and replicate it because this will be a future kit as yeah. you can see it looks quite good clean but i mean when do you ever see this stuff silver oh, you just is. don't do no. you no I'm keen to see what you see what you do with this you, you chucked that on my desk yesterday afternoon went that looks all right doesn't it and what what's this stuff bold Oh, it's, it's, Bolt, uh, yeah. it's just an acrylic yeah uh, so it's nothing expensive yeah. i mean you, you know you can use your valios and that sort of stuff this is just cheap stuff it's you know it's got really good pigments in it so it doesn't take much it's artist acrylics from the works there we they're, go they're about 12 quid for a set of 16 something like that they're dirt cheap really so i'm gonna you get i'm gonna try and replicate this but again it doesn't need to be the same because yeah. you know this panel could have been sat out there longer or not as long. You've only got to go for a walk by a farm and look at a barn and look at how the how the sheets have weathered. They go in quite unusual patterns. They tend to be sort of blocks in the middle and things like that. So they're quite. So this is sort of just. This is pretty much like a red oxide. It's not so far I'm, off, is it? So I'm having this as like the you know the established sort of rust. I'm going to leave the bit where my thumb is, yeah. and then I'm going to use an orange which is from the same kit, and this will give you a more fresher rust. So, you know, steel will rust in, you know, 24 hours, and it will go orange very quickly. And as any, as any fresh steel gets exposed and the rusting starts again, you'll always get the orange on top of the brown. So I'm going to try and streak it on a little bit. I'm just going to rub my finger over this and just try and thin it out a little bit and just clean the high spots away as you can see so i'm cleaning the high i'm cleaning the high spots where there'd be less established rust because it's not sitting inside the established rust will be in the low spots so i'm going to use the orange now i'm not I haven't cleaned the brush i've just mixed it together and i'm going to try and put some streaks in it if from the rain has just streaked the rust down see if you can see that you can see i'll put the streaks in it Again, another wipe in a downward position this time. Obviously, I'm doing this so this is lying long ways. The streaks would be the other way if it was sat in an upright position. You've got to remember which way gravity is when you're modelling. And then to finish off, I'm going to put some black on it. I was using black yesterday, but I'm actually going to just try some weathering powder on it because it'll probably bite really well. And I'm going to put the black along the bottom it's sort of in the grime there about two minutes left right okay right i'm going to finish this i'm going to lean this up the gable end and we're going to leave it there for today so that's super quick super rust but it's sort of there i'm going to lean this up this gable end which i intended on doing with the other one i'll show you on the camera that's really smart I'll, I'll take photographs of this later so you can see it in the facebook group and see in more detail there we go so we've got the, the panels rusted there we've got the gauze brush we've got the alex 006 we've got the planter that we've made with our alex 80 sleepers. Yeah, sleepers obviously we've got the cake 63 which is sort of the, the main job and then we've got the scaffolding that's going to be out soon so yes. handful of kits really on smart. a board 50 minutes you know to be fair if i had two hours it, it, you know it would it, be pretty good but that ain't bad i'm happy with that for 50 minutes hope you've enjoyed it guys hopefully justin will let me out my cage again where all the laser oh, yeah. rooms are yeah and i may be back with, with some more thanks cheers guys